Shemuel Rishon, 1 Samuel 19. And Shaul spoke to Elyonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Shaul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Shaul, my father, seeks to kill you. Now therefore, I pray you, take heed to yourself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide yourself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in a field where you are, and I will commune with my father of you, and what I see, that I will tell you. And Jonathan spoke good of David unto El Shaul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been to you ward very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Pelishti, and Yahuwah wrought a great salvation for all Yasharel. You saw it, and did rejoice. Wherefore then will you sin against innocent blood, to slay David without a cause? And Shaul hearkened unto the voice of Jehonathan, and Shaul swore, as Yahuwah lives, he shall not be slain. And Jehonathan called David, and Jehonathan showed him all those things. And Jehonathan brought David to El Shaul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Pelishtim, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil Ruach from Yahuwah was upon El Shaul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Shaul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Shaul's presence and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Shaul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michal, David's woman, told him, saying, If you save not your life tonight, tomorrow you shall be slain. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michal took a teraphim and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Shaul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. And Shaul sent the messengers again to see David saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was a teraphim in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Shaul said unto Michal, What have you deceived me so, and sent away my enemy, that he is escaped? And Michal answered El Shaul, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill you? So David fled and escaped, and came to El Shemuel to Ramah and told him all that Shaul had done to him. And he and Shemuel went and dwelt in Nevith. And it was told Shaul, saying, Behold, David is at Nevith in Ramah. And Shaul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Shemuel standing as appointed over them, the Ruach Elohim was upon the messengers of Shaul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Shaul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Shaul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Siku. And he asked and said, Where are Shemuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Nevith in Ramah. And he went thither to Nevith in Ramah. And the Ruach Elohim was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nevith in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Shemuel in like manner. 
and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Shaul also among the prophets? 